What's going on button pushers? Welcome to the channel. My name is David. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how I color in Premiere Pro. Now I don't always color in Premiere Pro anymore. I do use DaVinci now but I did drop a tutorial um, in 2019 about how to color in Premiere Pro and since then a lot has changed so I kind of want to refresh and kind of give you guys a few more tips and kind of just redo that video and give you guys a quick little rundown of how I color in Premiere Pro. Testing, 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 sinking, sinking, sinking. <clears throat> Alright, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And real quick before we get started, let's take a word from our sponsors, Cherry Coke. Just kidding. Alright, let's jump into the video. So we have this, uh, so we're going to go over three clips today. One is going to be this stylized, you know, well kind of lit music video where, you know, it's kind of stage lighting you know, it looks a little bit more colorful. And then we have one frame where it's just kind of all right lighting, you know, not the best lighting, okay lighting, and we're gonna try to fix those skin tones and kind of make it look a little bit better, a little bit more clean. And then we have this shot here where the lighting is kind of poor, you know, it's not the best, the skin tones might be a little bit harder to come back, and it is just a little bit more out of focus kind of thing, so it could be a little bit harder. So the first thing we're going to do is find a good frame here to color. I think this is a pretty nice one. You know, you got even red here, you know, nothing much, too much going on. So it's so it's a pretty good frame just to use to color. So this specific shot is shot on red. So we have it in our 3D. So it's raw. So it's going to be a lot easier and we're going to have a lot more control. So I'm not actually going to touch any of the raw settings, which you got all you're going to see right here. I'm not going to touch any of these because if you're not shooting on red, you might be a little bit confused. So none of this is going to be touched. I'm just going to stick with these. I'm just going to stick with what I can do in Lumetri color itself without touching any of the red raw settings. Sure. A lot of you might be like, Oh, but then you won't get the whole potential of the color. But you know, I want to be able to give you guys something you can relate to, even if you're not doing red raw footage. Um, the footage is going to have a lot easier when it comes to like crushing specific colors. Like you can see that even when I'm doing this wheel, it holds up really, really well at the same time still just to kind of give you guys a better understanding. So Anyways, so there's two ways to go about color grading this. You can just color it flat on the log and just start going at it, or you can use a conversion LUT. Now, a conversion LUT is something that I use now because it makes it a lot easier to color grade because you're not coloring specifically off this log uh, profile, which is a lot flatter and could be a little bit more hard to grade. Like I could always just go into the curves, kind of do this and this, or I can use a conversion LUT. So I have a ton of red conversion LUTs. I have conversion LUTs for S-Log, conversion LUTs for Canon, conversion LUTs for Blackmagic, for Alexa. You know, you can download them. There's a lot that are free online and you can just pretty much find them anywhere. So we're going to do low contrast soft and this is going to already give us this nice vibrant type look. And you can always do it on the creative so you can tone it down. Um, I'm just going to leave it here on the basic color corrections and I'm actually going to just take away some of the, you know, vibrance and saturation a little bit. Um, we're going to go into the creative LUTs if you want. You can throw on like a stylized LUT, tone it down a little bit, you know, whatever you really want to do if there's a look that you really like. But I don't think we need one for this because it's uh, a little bit already colorful, you know. So from here, it's already good color. Like, honestly, you don't have to touch too much because you could just leave it at hit this. It's, it's a good look. And if anything, I would just go and add a little different hues and make it look a little bit more stylized than it already is. Maybe take away some of this purplish looking color and make it a little bit more blue. So I don't really want to mess around with it too much because it might mess up the rest of the color. So here, if anything, I would touch the highlights, the shadows. And again, you know, highlights uh, change the brighter parts of the video the brighter parts of the image the shadows you know change the darker parts of the image same thing with the whites the whites are the brighter the blacks are the blacks exposure just boosts everything all at the same time um yeah honestly there's not too much i want to do here uh maybe with the curves i might add like a little bit of filmic kind of look so i'm going to take this top right corner here which is basically the highlights and the whites I'm going to bring it down a little bit and as you can see there's like a kind of fade that happens when I bring that down and then the same thing with the shadows and the blacks I'm actually going to bring this up and you can see again it brings back that kind of fade and then I'm just going to simply give it a little bit of a, a curve downward and you get that kind of darker kind of look. Now this looks really good to me I think this is an amazing image if anything I would just maybe make it a little bit brighter and if anything I can just bring that up here in the curves to kind of brighten up that face a little bit. 
And uh, honestly, from there, I don't really think I want to change too much. Maybe I will take those purples and make them a little bit more blue again. And maybe actually tone those down and take away the saturation a bit. So honestly, I, I like this look. It was more practical lighting than anything because, you know, the colors all really come from that light that I've set up. The Aperture MC on the, you know, the ceiling and then in Aperture P60C outside, you know, lighting up that chain, that fence. And honestly, that's all we're really going to do with this. It's, it's not too much. It's not too much I want to do with it. And, you know, it's not something that's too stylized. So let's jump on to the next one. This one's going to be a little bit harder. This is shot in C-Log 3. So we're not getting that raw control. We're not getting all that capabilities. So we're going to start off with a Canon conversion lot. You can see right here I have a C-Log to Rec. 709. And that already is going to give us that conversion back to linear from the log profile. And that just makes it a lot easier to color grade. So from there, we can go for a stylized look. Let's throw on this Kodak Killer LUT. And you can see everything's a little bit more already stylized. Bump that sharpening. Bump some vibrance in there. And uh, take away some saturation. Just, just a slight bit. Because, I don't know, I just really like it. I've been doing it since I've started. We're going to throw up the highlights to brighten up these brighter areas of the image. Uh, take down these shadows just a bit. And then maybe even boost the exposure a little bit for that extra brightness. You can see we're getting a lot of color back into this and I want to kind of take out these yellows out of the back just for a cleaner look and uh, so we're going to go into the curves here okay and we're going to see the hue versus saturation and you guys saw me doing this playing this around with this in the last foot uh, the last footage so I'm going to explain to you what's going on here. So I'm creating a key point here at the greens because uh, yellow is right here. So then we're going to do that and we're going to make another key point on the other side where it has the yellows kind of in the middle and we're just going to take this yellow, make a yellow point in the middle and we're going to drag it down and you can see, look at the window uh, right about here, you can see that when I drag this down, the yellows go away completely and that's just simply because I took all the saturation from that part out and I can do the same thing with the oranges if I want to, it's right here take down the oranges, everything's pretty much gone, and you're left with like blues over here. So uh, the oranges are a little bit invasive when it comes to it, because I do want a clean white look, but it's going to be hard to eliminate. Now, I, let's start with the skin tones right here. So we have the skin tones. I'm just going to change the hue. I'm just going to make it and uh, kind of go over like this. And as you can see, it's kind of changing the background at the same time. So when it comes to something like that, you're going to want to start changing your temperature. Your temperature is going to be the thing that kind of controls those whiter parts. Because our skin tones are a very definite orange, while we have a lingering orange back here on the background whites. So once I change that temperature, you can see that the background whites don't really have any more orange in them. They're a little bit more blue now. So that gives me a little bit more leeway, in my opinion, to kind of play around with these oranges we still have some oranges down here and that's okay we're gonna go back because I'm gonna go into the HSL color but first let's play around these curves let's do that same kind of faded look that I like uh, bring the highlights and sh uh, whites up or I mean down and the uh, shadows and blacks up and then we're just gonna make a little bit of an S curve just to brighten up the you know scene in general and now we're gonna go down to the HSL curves now this one is where it gets interesting. You're going to pinpoint a specific color and in this case we're going to do the skin tones. So let's click a skin tone right here with the eyedropper tool and we're going to click this checkbox next to color slash gray. This is going to, well it's supposed to, it's supposed to tell me uh, what I have selected but it's not and that's kind of weird. Hello? Okay there we go. Let's do that again. So you take uh, the eyedropper tool and you do that. And then it, I guess if it's not going to show up, you click the eyedropper plus tool. This is going to add to the colors that you have selected on this. And we're just going to select all the skin tones and we're going to get rid of the tattoo parts because, you know, those are the black tattoos. And we don't want to get too much black because it's got the camera in it and then it got some of the background in it. So we're going to do that and then we're going to uncheck the box and then we're just going to play around with it. You can see that I can change my skin tone to whatever... I want it to be and uh, we're just gonna make it look good so you can play around with this we're gonna make it a little bit uh, more pinkish and then do a cool tone here and uh, that looks pretty good to me 
Honestly, I think I might have to actually add the black in because the tattoo skin tone makes it look kind of weird when I don't. So we're going to do that. And honestly, that looks like a really good shot to me. So let's see what the before looked like in comparison. I think I might actually tone down these skin tones real quick. Now these oranges right here, I'm going to tone them down. Um, we're going to maybe add a shadow tint. Because I want it to be a little bit more stylized. I, do, I don't really care about it being too, uh, too white in the back. But let's see what the before looks like. So this was the before super flat image and you know there's no real color in it and that's fine and then you just go back add the conversion LED, go through all the steps kind of change up the color and you end up with a final result like this if anything again yeah i would change up the color skin tones a little bit it was a little bit kind of a weird lighting situation at the time so there's not much we could do if the lighting was better you could get a better image out of this but you do what you can, and I honestly think it's not a bad image. It's super, super clean, and it looks really good. Now we're going to jump on to this last one where the footage is a little bit darker. The skin tones aren't the best, and the lighting in general is even worse than the last shot. <laughs> so again, we're going to start with the C-Log to Rec. 709 conversion LUT. And I'm going to brighten, start off just completely brightening up this image because it is a little bit dark. And we're going to bring up those highlights and then bring down those shadows just to kind of get those blacks in the Canon camera here a little bit better. And then uh, play around with the temperature a little bit and see what I, as close as I can get to a good skin tone. We're not going to add a, con uh, a creative LUT to this. I'm going to stick with just the conversion LUT so you guys can kind of see what it'll be like. So we're going to just make it like a nice HDR kind of look just for something like a product review video. Wink, wink. <laughs> What's in my hand? Uh, if I haven't released that video yet. But from there we can you know add sharpening add some vibrance take away some saturation maybe tone that down a little bit actually and we can go in and add some shadow tints and this is just going to kind of add some color to those darker areas in the f image and i i really like doing shadow tint and i don't know it just makes things look really good don't go like super drastic with it you can i guess if you really want to but you know i just like to add a little bit just for some stylized type looks and that's definitely okay same thing with the highlight tone um, I don't think I really want to add anything to the this image specifically, but that's what that's going to do for you. And as far as you know, making this curve, I'm probably going to do the same thing, maybe a little bit less drastic once again, because it's just kind of my style. It's just kind of what I do. And the main thing we're going to do here is need to fix these skin tones. Honestly, I feel like it kind of looks nice on this hand over here on the left, but the right hand doesn't look as good as I'd want it to be. So what we can do is go again, go into the saturations and whatnot. I'm going to give it a little bit of boost of color because lately I have been kind of liking that extra color type look. I'm going to change the hue a little bit. Um, we can do this color match thing. It's the same thing as the split tone, but it gets a little bit more in-depth. You know, you have the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights. The highlights, again, brighter parts of the photo. Shadows are the darker parts, and the mid-tones are everything that are in-between, so skin tones and, and all that good stuff. Now, you can also bring down the brightness and saturation, or brightness of those areas as well as changing the color but we're not going to really touch any of that because i don't really want too much of that now you see on the screen here it is a little, you know very red i just noticed that and i kind of want to turn tone that down so i'm going to go into the hue versus saturation and just tone down the saturation of these reds over here now again you got to keep in mind that if you're doing this you don't want to do like a definite like dip like you don't want to like do a straight line down because that could mess up with the other colors on the curve so just kind of try to ease into it if possible like just like uh i don't know because you see here fingernail color is gone because i just did a definite drop so we're gonna you know bring this up a little bit just so i can get a little bit of color into those fingernails and we still are left with a little bit here what i could do is um jump into that hsl color select this specific thing and tone down the saturation we're going to do the color gray so we can see exactly what uh what's going on here and then close it we are getting a little bit of an issue because it is the fingernail so let's go back and try to take out what we can here let's see how this looks
That's a little bit better. See, the thing I, li I don't like about Premiere is that it is a little bit limiting, and if you want to keep going at this, you kind of got to get multiple layers. So DaVinci is what I use now for color grading, but Premiere is still very capable. It just takes a lot longer to get to the place you want to be when you're coloring. So, you know, I definitely recommend DaVinci if you're really going to go like super, super in-depth. But if you do want to use Premiere, it is viable. It just takes a little bit longer. So I think that's all for today because um, just some quick color grading tutorials, just some really quick grading tips. Um, maybe even if I go here, let me uh, mute this. Let's try to do one without a conversion LUT. Yeah. So let me make a new adjustment layer for this one. So we're going to color this on the adjustment layer just so I don't lose any of that uh, Lumetri color I did before. So we're not going to use a conversion LUT. We're going to color flat log footage. You know, I'm going to bump the exposure, bring up the highlights to make the image a little bit brighter, and tone down those shadows so I get a little bit darker area here. We're going to jump straight into the curves because that way I can get the exposure and everything down. I'm going to do what I like, and I'm actually going to do extra of the uh, brighter side so that I can really get this image bright. Um, let me tone it down a little bit. Um, from here, skin tones. We want to get those skin tones down. We're going to bump the saturation just a little bit, and then we're going to jump into the hues. Cool. And then again, if you want, just throw on a uh, creative LUT to kind of stylize your look. And then we're going to maybe jump into the split tones so I can get in a few good uh, skin tones in here. We're going to start with a shadow tint. Hmm. I think this is cool. And maybe a highlight. Nope. Actually, I'm going to leave the highlight tint alone. So from there, let me brighten up a little bit more. And play around with the temperature, just so I can see. Because I kind of want like a cooler look, but at the same time, I don't want to mess with the skin tones too much. So after that, I'm going to jump straight into the HSL color once again. We're going to select the skin, open the color gray. For some reason, it doesn't show up. So we're going to take the eyedropper tool plus and then go back in. So you see how I'm highlighted. That means all of the skin tones are selected. And I'm just going to play around with this. Let's make the image a little bit cooler again. I'll jump back into this HSL color. And then, um, honestly, I think we're good. And I think the image kind of turns out exactly the same. Let's see. Actually, I like <laughs> I like it better without the conversion LED, but I think that's because I kind of went into a more stylized look and really paid more attention to the skin tones a bit. It, yeah, so I think that yeah, maybe I should just brighten this up a little bit and add a little bit more color. And then we get about the same look. So this is the regular. And this is the C-Log version. Conversion LUT, no conversion LUT. And I think it's just a very slight temperature difference. So if I just go onto this one and turn the temperature down a little bit, make it a little bit more green, tone down the saturation a little bit. Well, you get the point. But the, I actually like the, the non-conversion LUT version. And you guys saw how quick I did that. It, it was just kind of go through, play around with the settings, change the lighting, and then add the color. You, know, you, don't, you don't really have to go too crazy with your color grading because it's just super simple. Anyways, guys, that's all for today's video. That was kind of long, 23 minutes. And, you know, color grading is super simple. It just takes a lot of practice, kind of gets, it takes a lot of knowing what you want as a final product and kind of getting familiar with your program itself. So we did three different footages in 23 minutes and, you know, from scratch, not even a copy and paste. Now, once you get one color grid down, you can copy those settings, paste it onto the next one, and then go from there, make your minor tweaks. And it goes by really, really quick. So um, I hope this video helps you guys, especially if you guys are new to the game. I really hope it helps you. Let me know in the comments below if the video actually helped you, if what you guys want to learn next. Just drop something for me in the comments below. Anyways, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep pushing buttons, guys, and uh, have fun coloring. Peace.